Welcome to today's five-minute Bible study in the book of Daniel. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2, and in this chapter we see that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, has had a dream. He wants it interpreted. Daniel is found to be able to tell him what the dream was and to give the interpretation. Now, Daniel, is, Nebuchadnezzar, no, this is not from me. It's not my wisdom that allows me to do this. This is from God, the true God, the God of all. He has revealed to your majesty, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, he has revealed to you what he is about to do, what is to transpire in the coming days. So then Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar his dream. We're in verse 31 of chapter 2. Now, your majesty looked, that is, in his dream, and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous, dazzling statue. It was awesome in appearance. Now, the head of that statue was made of pure gold. His chest and arms were made of silver. His belly and thighs were made of bronze. Its legs were of iron. Its feet were partly of iron and partly of baked clay. Now, while you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay, and it smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were all broken to pieces and became like chaff on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain, and it filled the whole earth. This was the dream, and now we will interpret it to the king. So you remember one of the king's provisions was the interpreter must be able to tell me the dream first so I know you're being honest with me and then give me the interpretation. So Daniel tells him what the dream was. He had seen this tremendous statue and it was impressive looking. But the interesting thing is the statue was made of different types of substances. The head was of gold, the chest was of silver, the belly and thighs were of bronze and the legs were of iron. And then the feet were iron mixed with clay. What in the world does this statue mean? And then there's a rock, a rock that is cut but not by human hands, which indicates this rock is of divine origin, not of human origin, not by human hands. It strikes the statue on the feet, and the statue is totally obliterated, becomes like chaff and swept away by the wind with no trace left. But the rock becomes a huge mountain and fills the whole earth. Now, it's no wonder that this dream had disturbed Nebuchadnezzar. Then he says, I'm going to tell you what it means by the power of God. He says in verse 37, Your majesty, you are the king of kings. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands he has placed all mankind and all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. Wherever they live, he has made you ruler of them all. You are the head of gold. Now Daniel acknowledges that the Babylonian Empire is mighty in power, but he wants Nebuchadnezzar to understand God has given you this place. God has given you this authority. It's not of your own doing. Now, this is a blow to the pride of Nebuchadnezzar, who wants to say, I created this empire. I created this kingdom. It's mine. And he says, oh, no. God has given it to you, and you are answerable to God. And he goes on to tell Daniel that this statue you see represents four different kingdoms that will come. The present kingdom is yours, the Babylonian kingdom. You are the head of gold. But there's going to be another kingdom to follow yours, that's the silver. There's going to be another kingdom to follow that. That's the bronze. And there's going to be another kingdom to follow that. That is the iron. There are four different kingdoms that will arise. Now, there's a lesson here for Nebuchadnezzar. Worldly kingdom does not last. It comes and it goes. For a moment, the empire looks like it is impossible to overcome. The empire looks like it will endure forever, but then it's, it's suddenly gone and replaced by another kingdom, another empire another country, all by the providential hand of God. So Nebuchadnezzar, though you are a great king now, your kingdom will not endure. You might be the head of gold now, but your kingdom will not endure. There will be another. God has shown this to you. He's shown you that in the coming days, there are four great kingdoms that are to arise on the earth. Now, we know absolutely that the first kingdom 
is the Babylonian Empire. We know that because Daniel says it straight out. You are the head of gold. Babylon is the first kingdom. But now there are three other kingdoms to come. And then they're going to be followed by that rock that becomes a mountain. God is going to do something to surpass all earthly kingdoms. So the worldly kingdoms might be great. They're only temporary. But that which God sends, the kingdom of God, will endure forever. That's going to be the rock. But we'll get to that. Uh, tomorrow we'll look at what these other kingdoms represent. We know the first one is Babylon. What are the other three kingdoms? And what about this rock, this kingdom of God, this movement of God that is coming? We'll begin to look at that in our next study. So join us next time for our five-minute Bible study in the book of Daniel.